Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Crew First Culture Podcast. My name is Jeremy. Thank you very much for spending some time with me today. Man, I'm I'm thankful to be on here and have the ability to record some episodes again and, and just reconnect with some people out there. So thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your time. So today's a, a pretty big one for me. You know, I've I've actually went back and forth on this. I've recorded it several times, even though I have lots of other things I need to be doing. Because as I have talked through it, I've really figured out that I have no idea what I'm talking about and I've got a lot to learn. So kind of reworking everything. To be honest, I, I even kind of question this needs to be a, a a bigger topic with some guests. So I will probably figure out some guests to uh, that would be really good to dig into this and then we'll do a, a another underground leadership movement episode with this topic. But for so for today, the topic is basically followership. And like I've said in the past, like I say in most of my classes, I suck at followership. I am not good. I'm not good at followership in my almost four years as a station officer. That has probably easily been one of the very most, if not the most, or the biggest areas that I need to work on. My my biggest struggles. I've not been good. I've had lots of learning experiences. And by that, I mean learning from failures and learning from really stupid choices that I've made. And so definitely an area that I need a lot of work in, an area that I want to learn more and find ways to make better. So uh, to start out with, really, this this kind of came to mind because I was lucky enough to listen into the first responder training episode this last week with Echelon Front. So if you, you aren't familiar with that, Echelon Front is the company. It's got, you know, Jocko and, and Leif Bab and all the military superheroes that are amazing people and, and super leaders. And they, you know, they go to all these businesses and, and help them with leadership and, and all kinds of things. And so they have started a few months back a monthly kind of training episode. Basically, it's a, it's a live zoom meeting that anyone can log in it's free log in you listen to them kind of give their class for an hour or so and then you know you can ask them questions and actually you know talk with you and talk through your questions so it's awesome i think it's every third tuesday of the month but you can go on echelon front echelon front their website and, and check that out for sure so you can get the right dates but anyway so this last week, it was hosted by Leif Babin, who's one of the the uh, co-authors of Extreme Ownership and the Dichotomy of Leadership. But he was hosting, and he had a guest on, Jason Gardner, who I believe, if I'm not wrong, is was a master chief. So anyway, uh, Jason Gardner brought up this point, and it it really spoke to me. Uh, so. He said, don't think of it as leading up the chain of command. Think of it as influencing up the chain of command. And so to me, man, that really kind of put it in a perfect light for me. Because honestly, that's something I've really struggled with, kind of being able to, to feel like I have any control over getting better at this topic is that term leading up. Oh, how do you do that? What does that even mean? Is is it even okay to do? And it's, it's just a, it's kind of an overwhelming term for me. But when he rephrased it, influencing up and kind of talked through some different points, man, it really struck out to me or struck to me like, God, it makes perfect sense. And, you know, you see it all the time. Leadership is influence or, you know, it, it's said different ways. So it's not like it's some crazy quote that, you know, nobody should have ever thought about. It's it's very simple. But putting it in those terms really 
put it in a different perspective for me. It, it made it feel like it was something doable. I can do that. I can, I can figure out ways to influence up the chain of command. Even though when it was leading up the chain of command, I I felt absolutely clueless. I didn't know what to do. So it, it's just a it's neat seeing how just rephrasing something, rewording something can make it appear completely different, even though it's basically the same thing. So, <clears throat> you know, like I said, followership is something I've really struggled with. I, I always have excuses. You know, it's, you know, they're, I'm just wasting my time because they're not going to listen to me anyway. You know, I, I don't know why I want to do this because, you know, what is it, what is it really going to affect? You know, I sit here and, and make whatever excuses I want to, but really they're just lies. They're lies that I'm telling myself so that I can justify not doing anything. I can justify staying in my comfort zone because this is an area that is very uncomfortable for me. And, you know, being somebody who sits up here and talks all the time about pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone and, and being comfortable, being uncomfortable, all that stuff. I am absolutely stuck in my comfort zone in this area. And so that is definitely something I need to stop and I need to get better at, you know, so the bottom line, you know, the lies I'm telling myself, I just, I'm avoiding putting in that work. I'm avoiding pushing myself to somewhere I'm not comfortable going, which means I need to do it even more. And so that's, that's something that that's really kind of, that's one of the, the things that, like I said earlier, you know, as I'm recording this for the who knows number of time, I start kind of pulling out of my own head as I'm talking. And, and it wasn't something I was thinking about earlier. I am somebody who sits here and preaches all the time. Basically everything that I, I have crew first on says something about staying humble. Yet I am the guy who's so arrogant that I either give somebody a cold shoulder or I totally avoid them because I don't agree with their choices they're making, or I don't, you know, I don't understand why they're taking the department in this direction or, you know, whatever, whatever it is, that's complete, utter arrogance on my part to feel like I have the right to treat somebody like that because of whatever lies I'm justifying in my head. And so this is definitely an area that I have got to work on because what, what influence do I have right now up the chain of command? If, if I'm the guy that, you know, I've never been disrespectful in the, the terms of, you know, just verbal, verbally abusing a, uh, <laughs> a boss or, you know, being outright verbally disrespectful. But like I said, you know, I've regrettably and, and embarrassingly enough, I've been the person to completely ignore somebody, completely give somebody a cold shoulder, completely avoid certain people because I was irritated with them for doing things that did not make sense to me. <laughs> And saying it makes it even more embarrassing. You know, I, I, I don't know why that was ever okay to me. You know, I, I almost felt like I was, I had some type of pride in being the person that didn't smile and, and shake their hands and, and be fake and, and all that. No, I'm not going to be fake. You know, I, that's that's one thing that that will not happen but to not shake somebody's hand to not say hi to not address them in a friendly way is just wrong i don't care what i'm disagreeing with i don't care what i'm frustrated with it's just wrong it's not the way i want to treat people it's not the way i want my kids to treat people or or anybody else 
And so I had to take a really hard look at why that is and how I'm going to fix it. You know, it's the, it's the golden rule thing. I love the golden rule. And that golden rule doesn't just apply to those that I agree with or those that I'm like-minded to. That golden rule applies to every single person you come in contact with. And, and I've definitely got to figure out a way to make that right. I think that I, I know exactly where to start. Where to start for me is to take the few minutes when I have the opportunity to shake those hands, to smile, to greet those chiefs in a respectful way, to, to say hi, to take just a little bit, to check on them, to, to let them know that, hey, I am a person that cares about you. you know, it doesn't matter what page we're on, if we're not on the same page, you're still a person and I care about you. And that's it. You know, I'm not going to sit there and, and brown nose. I'm not going to sit there and pretend like I agree with, you know, everything. I am going to go into this with the, the 100% intentions of avoiding every department related conversation. What I'm working on is basically going to be off duty family home projects, off days, whatever. That's the stuff that I am going to try to work on. I, I don't want it to involve anything with work because I feel like that's where we need to start. You know, if, if you're at a place that is struggling in this area, it's going to be hard. You know, I, like I I truly believe the difference between a divided organization and a united organization are relationships. You know, it, it seems pretty easy, it's pretty obvious answer, but you know, it's it's not an easy answer sometimes. It's it's not easy to achieve those relationships, uh, and and I think the cure is just little things, just stopping by somebody's office, and like I said shaking hands, saying hi, checking on them for a minute or two and leaving or stopping in by the station. If you're in the area, checking on the, the men and women doing the work and seeing if they need anything. No agenda, no, you know, no formalness to it at all. You know, I get that when you're in those levels the 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 chief levels the higher ups the the fire chief assistant chiefs you have agendas that you have to deal with you have conversations that you have to push out that are formal and i understand and i am not taking that away i'm not taking that against anybody what i am saying is we need the informal stuff too we need the little conversations in between and and when I say we, we need, that goes both ways. We need to be doing that up the chain ourselves as well. It goes both ways. I feel like that is a, that is the cure that we need to stop this separation. Just the little conversations, just the showing people that we care, the building of the relationships so that when problems do come up, when things do come up that we need, we can go to our bosses and talk about it or ask for it. And they're going to know that we're, we need it. It's important because I don't just come to you with everything. I don't just come to you with problems. I don't just come to you when I need something. So when I do, it's probably important. But if you don't spend the time ahead, to build relationship, to have that trust. If you don't spend the, the time ahead and, and the effort to you know, have a relationship with those people so that they know that when you come to them with something, it's truly important because they trust that that's the only times you're going to come to them like that. 
if that's not there, then this doesn't change. Nothing changes. You know, if you're at an organization that is having a hard time in this area, if you have a divided organization, say suppression and, and administration is divided or, you know, the, the suppression informal leaders are divided from the formal leader, whatever it is, if that's where you're at, then this is going to be a hard road. I, there is no other way to put it. It will be a hard road. But does that mean that it's not worth taking? Does it mean that, man, you know, I don't even know where to start. So, you know, whatever. We're just gonna, we're just gonna keep it like it is. This is something that is way, way worth every bit of effort, every bit of time that you have, because it will completely change your entire organization. You know, if if that's the the place you're at, if you're in that less than than a ideal place, you know, some of these things will look bad. You know, if if you have a chief stopping in to your station to try to start to build these relationships, it's probably going to be, be seen as, hey, he's he's checking up on us, trying to get us in trouble, see if see what we're doing wrong, or you know, or, or spying on us. And I get it, man. I I get it. But you're just going to have to keep going. You're going to have to keep pushing through that. You're going to have to show them that that is not what I'm doing. I am here because I want to be here because I want to build a relationship with you. And that that is what we have to fight and fight and fight for. No, it won't be easy. Yes, there will be lots of people that are going to be naysayers and lots of people that are going to question what you're doing if it's something out of the norm. And that's fine. I'm more than happy to answer your question. I am not here to get you in trouble. I am here because I know our organization needs to build relationships from the ground up. And this is what I'm doing. I'm spending three minutes with you guys because I'm just in the area. I just wanted to check up on you, see if you needed anything, tell you I'm proud of of all you're doing and you know i'll talk to you later and that's it and over time as you do this as they see that that's truly what you're doing that's truly your intentions some of that will change but it is going to be a long road and it's going to be a road that you're going to have to commit to so you know like i said i i am absolutely not an expert on this topic i am the farthest from it i am the person that needs to hear this and and i am going to start thinking about some good people to have on to really dig into this because i think there's a lot there a lot there that we all need to hear and i i don't want to just hear it from myself i want to learn from others so i will definitely look into that and, and see what i can do about bringing some good guests on to dive really, really far into followership. But, you know, like I, like I said, I'm not an expert, but I am somebody that wants to get better. I want to become a better person. I want to become a better leader. And what that means is when I see things I'm not good at, I've got to figure out a way to, to get better and grow. And this is a very easy, it's not a very easy, this is a very blatant area that, that I need to focus on. So, you know, like I said, just keep in mind, the golden rule doesn't apply to, to just those you like, just those that you agree with, just those that you're like-minded with. It applies to everybody. So we've got to start building relationships now. We've got to stop going to the boss only when there's a problem or only when we need something. We need to build a groundwork now so that down the road, when you need something, they know that it's probably important because this isn't something they just do all the time. You know, followership is hard. I don't even know if that's a real word. I try to type it up and it spell check doesn't like it. So it might not even be a real word. It's hard especially for somebody like me that it doesn't come natural, especially for somebody like me that even though I try to sit on a pedestal of, of humbleness and, and all that, I 
am still arrogant enough to hold a grudge against somebody because I don't agree with what they're doing. I am so arrogant that it is hard for me to be okay shaking somebody's hand that I don't agree with. And that's wrong. It's crazy. I, 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 I don't understand why I've allowed that to happen. You know, like I said, the followership is so vital. It's so vital to the overall leadership package. You know, you, you can't truly be a well-rounded leader if you aren't also a good follower. So always be looking on way, looking for ways to level up your leadership. You know, if, if this is an area that you're weak in, then how can you fix it? How can you work on it? Uh, I mentioned how I'm going to work on it, but I'm sure there's so many other ways out there. Reach out to me. I'll, I'll you know, put a post out here in a, a little bit talking about the episode. Comment on it. Share your ideas. Let's brainstorm through this. You know, I look forward to learning from each and every one of you out there because I mean that man it it's an awesome thing when I share my thoughts like this and then you know others start sharing their thoughts and and people start saying hey this is exactly what I needed and and it's just an amazing thing it's awesome and like I did last week that that topic is exactly what I needed to hear and it was exactly in the way and in the terms that I needed to hear. And so hopefully some things that I brought up today are, are exactly what you need to hear. Somebody out there hopefully has gained some value through some of this stuff. And hopefully we'll get even deeper into it in the not so distant future. But but thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. As always, if you are struggling in this area. Let's figure out a way to fix it. Let's become better followers because we cannot become the leader that we truly are meant to be if we aren't good followers. So thank you. I appreciate so much your your time of coming on here, listening. If you enjoy the show, if you get anything out of it, I really appreciate if you could like it, share it, leave a, a review on on the uh, podcast as whatever it is uh, i is much appreciated so anyway until next time thank you stay humble and do work